If you want the actual perfect division on Papel, this is it. And this document is the reason, but because it's boring math, we'll talk about it later in the video. Since AAT came out, there is no single perfect division anymore, and anybody telling you otherwise is just selling you snake oil. First off, this only pertains to single player. Multiplayer is a completely different beast. Since players have half of brain cells, they can counter your tactics, so you have to account for that, and you're not just playing against the AI, which is stupid. Let's get into the divisions, the defensive divisions. This one is the tier 1 division. This is a division that you will use if you need need men on the field. Like, legitimately, if you need men. You don't have an industry, you have manpower to spare, and Germany's knocking at your door, you just need people on the front. These should ideally be equipped with infantry equipment too. Why infantry equipment too? Very simple. If we take a look, now I have research and I can click on. We have three guns to choose from. Gun one, which has pretty bad stats, uh, costs two steel. Gun two has only a little bit higher production cost, but gun three costs an entire steel more. This can slow you down insanely much. And like you have the three soft attack on the gun one and six soft attack on gun two. This is a very big jump. If you just need to defend very quickly and you don't have a lot of time, you should just go for a gun two. This is one that I would actually prefer you to use a 12 width with anti-air so like you need 18 air attack because i researched a bunch of things to actually showcase this these stats will be will be a little bit off but with basic support aa you will have 18 air attack usually you need 18 air attack to cancel out the plane damage that these units will take plus support a also gives you a decent amount of heart attack and you know like it's it's just a very good thing to use engineers just from all of the entrenchment that you can get as well as you know these all of these attack and defense modifiers and support artillery is just a nice little bonus for some soft attack now i wouldn't really want to use these but these are fine later on you will also add a medium flame tank and of course for the actual holy boys you also want an additional piece of artillery actually these are the holy boys and this is the template that i usually use the cafricon gives you a little bit more additional pushing power it is useful for defense but it's mostly used if you want to push with these units a little bit although you shouldn't even though i do this every single game you should not push with these divisions don't be like me. There's one final interesting defensive division, which is the Space Marine Division. This is pretty much the same as the defensive tier 2 division, just that we swapped out our AA with a light SP AA. The self-propelled anti-air gives us a little bit of additional armor. We do want 10 armor in our division to just negate the additional manpower loss and damage that we would take. This is a very good Space Marine. I mean, apart from the cost, like I just slapped a very basic anti-air tank. Depending on your industry, you would also modify this you know like this is just the improved light spaa which you won't have by the time that you make space marines it's more likely that you use the basic light tank chassis you slap some basic aa gun on it depending on your ic again different turrets uh, radio is always good and then you know additional modules like machine guns and all that depending on your ic now speed doesn't really matter for this so long as you don't go below 4 kmh which i don't think is possible <laughs> I've also talked about the flame tanks. There's two designs that we can take a look at. Number one, the very cheap flame tank for your infantry divisions. The cheapest thing you can find. It doesn't even have to have steel. You put a flamethrower on it. You put those blades on it. You call it a flame support tank. Boom, we're fine. This one is just there so you can produce it very quickly and it can just give you a nice little bit of entrenchment. And you also get terrain modifiers. One thing that should be said, it doesn't matter. This flame tank, you can use it until the end of the game. The only difference that another flame tank will make is speed. And that's the next one. You should only build this one for offensive divisions that are fast. This isn't the perfect one. I just slapped some stuff on it. You do want 12 kmh and then you can optimize for IC. As previously said, you should not push with infantry divisions. But if you want to, then you can use the offensive boys. They just have more infantry and more artillery and are pretty much just holy boys. They're 25 wood, just better stats, cost more. You, like I built them twice in the past year. <laughs> 
it's not really something that you, oh well, something that I rely on often. The Montini boys and the Marini boys. These two are the exact same as the offensive boys, just with the difference that they are special forces and they are actually good. If you can afford the additional experience, then they are actually really good. Like, I really like the Marini boys. The pioneers, they are so fucking good. Just look at this. This is pure crack. The difference between the offensive, the mountain and the Marine boys is very simple. They just use their specific support company as well as you replace all of the units with the special forces. The mountain boys will have rangers instead of recon and the marine boys will have pioneers instead of engineers. We also have the fast boys to offer. Honestly, my favorite design. Genuinely, I, I've started using them and they're so incredibly fun to use. Now, admittedly, if I want it to be perfect, there we go. We don't want to use this tank because it is very slow. We only want to use the improved flame tank to keep Actually, I don't want... in the design, you did see that it's 12k mage. So <laughs> it's just a bug from something. Probably just some modifier that's not accounted for. You just use the actual good flame tank for this one for the speed. Just the same old buffs. You do want logistics. I did not get support artillery for these. Simply because I feel like this, you don't really need the additional soft attack. And I would rather have the benefits from all of these support companies. In general, as for recon, the one that I mostly use is cavalry and then later on motorized. You can use the uh, light armored or the armored one. I Again, depending on your IC, but usually I just don't bother with it. It also depends on your fuel income. Ideally, your spearhead has motorized recon, but it depends. Later on, if you can afford it, you can also make mechanized, but do keep in mind, mechanized is much more expensive than trucks. Like, it's insane. It's five times as expensive and you do get benefits from it, but you also need more mechanized, like you need 40 mechanized and 35 trucks for every battalion. So it is even more expensive to use mechanized. One thing I also do is just, you know, like, oh, okay, I have a little bit of mechanized. There we go. Let's replace two. And then later on, I can replace more and more and so on and so forth. As for artillery, you can choose between rocket artillery and artillery. I usually go for artillery and then later on, I pivot to rocket artillery because it has better stats. It's also a little bit more expensive. We also have some hard boys. And this is probably the one template that you can't just copy here because it heavily depends on your doctrine. Because I'm already through here, our tanks do have more stats. Earlier on, you will have more motorized than medium tanks. And then later on, you can switch them out. You do want around 30 org. You can definitely go below that. Some people don't really like it, but honestly, I haven't found a problem with it. It can be a bit overkill because you already have enough stats and... If you have less orc, then, you know, they can drive from here to here and then they will have to reorg. Whereas if you give them less stats, they might be able to drive further, but can't push as effectively. So it's like, it's always a trade-off, but I do like big numbers. So I usually just go for more tanks and skirt the org line even below 30. Doesn't really matter. Like, as long as you use these companies, these support companies, and you have around this stat line, that's fine. I will link a Reddit post below the subscribe button and you can then see why certain combat whips are weighted heavier than others. They are very bad in mountains, they are very bad in urban, they are bad in jungles. Why do I want 30 width? The 30 width performs the best in forest and jungle as well as in urban territory and the urban territory will be the one where our tanks will struggle the most and they will fight there most often. If you ever have trouble with mountains you can just use infantry or mountaineers but the tanks are there to break through forests and urban terrain. Sure they could be more effective in plains terrain but plains is so easy to break through anyway because there's no modifiers on it so you might as well optimize for your worst denominator because the other ones don't really matter anyway the final two designs this is the garrison template that i pretty much always use the cheap one you will take more equipment and more manpower losses with this one but you just need five army xp sometimes you don't even need army xp because if you have a cavalry template that's like this then that's pretty much the same because the game will only use a certain amount we do need 65. Uh, 76.5, 67, it's hard being by, man, of the cavalry template, but it will only use as much equipment as we do need. If we make the template bigger and smaller, it's not gonna make any difference. But it will make a difference for support equipment because support equipment is always accounted for the entire division. This division would take the exact same support equipment as this division, even though there's 25 battalions in here and in the other one, there's only one. But for garrisons, it doesn't count full divisions, it counts half divisions. So you will use 50% of your support equipment. That's why we want a big stack for a garrison division and the light 
light tank. We use the light tank because if we design the cheapest light tank possible, then this one is less expensive than an armored car. Like the armored car costs four, this one costs 2.4 and we need the exact same for the battalion. So it doesn't even really matter. They have the exact same suppression stats. Uh, this is the best garrison template, but honestly, I just use horse. Since you're still watching, I can tell you're interested in becoming a better Hoi 4 player. So I can offer you uh, this video where I played the strongest Poland path that nobody knows about and I found out about all of these strats in real time.